Every year, Croatia ranks pretty high on the list of places that people want to stay for an extended period of time, however they go about doing that. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about some different options on how to stay long term. Now when you're looking at a place, or I know when we're looking at a place to come and stay for a longer stretch, there are some key components that rank pretty high for us. Now, Croatia ranks number 49th in the statistics for healthcare, which for us is, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, you know, compared to a lot of other countries in the area. And, and you know, the other thing that we really look at close is just the cost of living. Is it going to be affordable for us to stay here long term? And it ranks 60th in the world, so that's also pretty good mm -hmm. um, compared to what we're used to anyway. And, and then there's also the safety factor. Is it safe? We get this question asked all the time. Well, is it safe? Croatia's 13th in the world in safety, which is pretty darn safe. It's pretty darn safe. Now, for these statistics, um, one thing that we find interesting in each place that we travel to is you can look up this information and even compare it maybe where you currently live just for fun. Uh, and we will have all the links of any of the things that we talk about today down in the description so you can uh, check them out yourself. Now, some of the other reasons that Croatia ranks so high is the climate. It has a fantastic climate, blue skies most of the time. Um, that's a plus in our book. And then also just affordability, like we were discussing, mm -hmm. where we are from in comparison, incredibly affordable. Yeah, and it's also location in the world. If you want to travel about Europe, Croatia is a perfect spot for that. Split and Zagreb both have airports that can get you anywhere you want to go. So, so that's something else we kind of look at because we like to move around a little bit. You know, and quality of life, it just all really depends on what you're looking for. But what we're looking for is nice weather, a beach, um, and just, uh, just to be comfortable. Now we're going to go through the different options that you have to be able to come and stay longer term. The one thing about Croatia that's kind of interesting is there is not an actual retirement visa. Uh, there is nothing that you can do that is going to lead to citizenship or permanent residency. So we found that kind of interesting. Yeah, like Portugal where you could just basically buy your way in or there are just other options that made it a lot easier. We're not getting that in Croatia. Now if you are a citizen of the EU, a lot of this doesn't necessarily apply. You are automatically entitled to a work and residency permit in Croatia. So lucky you. Correct. And also, you know, with that being said, Croatia will be in the Schengen come the first of the year so that you EU citizens can stay for a little bit longer than, than we can. Now, the most popular is the 90 day upon arrival. And depending on your passport, you don't need to apply for a visa. You just stay for 90 days. And that's what we're able to do. Now, the newest uh, not really a visa, it's a digital nomad permit to be in Croatia. If you can prove that you're working for a company that is not in Croatia, then you can be granted a permit to stay in the country for one year. Right, and that is non-renewable, non-extendable. But there is one option with it. When the permit has expired, you do have to leave. And so you can leave for 90 days. You can then come back for 90 days on your 90 day regular visa. And then at that time you would go ahead and reapply. Another fairly popular option is purchasing real estate in Croatia. Now there is a really big downside to this. You can only be in Croatia for nine months of the year on this visa. Now in order to purchase property, you have to have permission from the Ministry of Justice here in Croatia. And when it, the way that the, the time that you can be here for that year works is, is that you get six months on a temporary residency, and then you also get your 90 days from just your regular visa when you enter. So that is how you come up with the nine months, but then at that point, you do have to leave. And once again, like the other, it is non-renewable and non-extendable. With this one though, you are able to reapply every year. Right, and you have to own and live in that property for the nine months. And there's no minimum on what the property costs. So that's actually an advantage. Mm -hmm. A couple other catches on this one is, is that you are not able to work in Croatia and that if you are married, you both need to be on the purchase agreement for the home. So this may not be as popular of an option with a lot of people just because you do have to have the accessibility to the funds to purchase a home right. that you can only be in for part of the year. But if you do, it does give you that option to have a place that uh, you have accessibility to be at for nine months of the year. Now I'd have to say this one is probably one of the more popular options yeah. for retirees. 
and this is the prepayment of rent residency permit. So this will allow you to stay for 12 months and I've kind of saw some different information, so you'll want to dig a little deeper into this, but it might give you 15 months because if you can come for three months on your visitor's visa, right. and then you can get the 12 month, but don't hold me to that one, you'll have to <laughs> check on that. So this, this to me is probably the most feasible option. Yeah, this would be the easiest, in my opinion, mm -hmm. just, to, just to put the cash up front and have it taken care of ahead of time, and then you've got those 15 months. Right. And so with this one, what you're going to do is you're going to get a rental contract. It needs to be notarized and it needs to, you're going to prepay for that entire time. And it doesn't have to be for a full year. If you just want to come and do six months, you pay for the six months and then that would be what you're applying to stay for. Correct. And there are, there are a couple strings attached. You cannot work in Croatia for a Croatian company. At the end of your stay, you need to leave Croatia for 90 days and you can reapply six months and one day after that time. So I think in the future for us, if we were to want to stay in Croatia for a longer stretch of time, this would probably be the best option for us. It's a little more cut and dry. Another option is a work visa. Now, in order to get the work visa, you have to be offered a job with a Croatian company and this visa is completely tied to your job. So if you quit your job or you get fired from your job, you need to leave Croatia. Okay, now how do you do all this, whichever option you pick? When you get to Croatia, you're gonna to need to go to the police station and apply for a residency permit. So a couple things that they're gonna need from you, they're going to need your passport, they're gonna need passport photos, they need a copy of birth certificate, mm -hmm. and they also need proof that you have health insurance currently. And this needs to be health insurance that is gonna cover you while you're in Croatia, so not your insurance that you have at home. Now they're also gonna need evidence of your housing situation while you're staying here. And they're also gonna do a background check to make sure you're not a bad guy. <laughs> Just don't apply for Just, your <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then the other thing that they're going to need is you need to show that you have sufficient funds to actually be in the country for the period of time that you're going to be here. Now this is kind of one of those gray areas based on the visa that you're applying for. Right. So we're not going to list the numbers, but we are going to put the links below that you can kind of go and research what's required because it's going to be based off of how many people are coming with you if it's just you, you and a, and a spouse, or you and entire yeah, family. Kind of now the fun area, taxes. <laughs> so the great thing is, unless you are earning money in Croatia, even though you are a temporary resident, you do not have to pay taxes while you're here. But if you're a resident in the United States, you will still continue to need to file your tax return in the States. And you also need to report any foreign bank accounts that you have opened. You can't not pay your taxes. <laughs> There's no way around that. <laughs> you just can't. But once again, regardless of the time that you spend in Croatia, you are still only paying on money that you earn while in Croatia. So that, that's kind of the beauty of that part. Now, just like always, we would definitely recommend that if you have any, if you are looking at coming, if you're purchasing a home or anything like that, get an attorney that is familiar with Croatian law and then also maybe the, the law of the country that you are also from so that mm -hmm. they can really guide you in. It's somewhere we're not an expert in, that's for sure. Yeah, and you know, we've done some research on other countries and that is the number one thing that we are told that you do want to get an accountant from that country, mm -hmm. a tax attorney from that country that speaks the language. Now, one of the main things we get asked all the time is what about the healthcare system? So here in Croatia, the healthcare is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they're ranked 49th in the world, which you mentioned. Um, there are clinics, there are doctors everywhere. There are a lot of English speaking doctors as well. Now there is a public health care system and some of the information we were reading was that after you have now had your insurance that you've shown them that you have insurance from home mm -hmm. when you're applying for residency permit that you would then be able to apply into and be on the public system so that was kind of gray area depending on which visa that you're looking right. at so that's also a possibility that you would be able to be on the public health care system as well. Correct, yes. One of the most expensive areas when you're looking at where you're going to be living is your housing costs. And here in Croatia, two of the probably more popular areas that people end up finding themselves is in Zagreb, the capital city, and then Split if you're like us and you like to be near the water. Now for a one bedroom rental here in the city center of Split, you're gonna be paying 
about $454. And if you get outside the city center a little bit, it is less expensive. You can get a one bedroom for about $339. Now in Zagreb, it is gonna run you about $538 if you wanna be in the city center, and then quite a bit less at $382 to be outside of the city center. So a little bit more in Zagreb than, than Split. So if I was you, I would pick Split because yeah. you're near the water. And there is an airport here. So yeah. it really kind of has everything that you would need. So one of the things we look for when we're looking for some place to stay long term is just simply the quality of life. What is it that, that it has to offer that, that we enjoy? And this can be subject. Everybody will have a different opinion. But Croatia does rank 24th on that list worldwide. In comparison, the United States checks in at 19. Right, and the UK comes in at 20th and Canada at 22nd. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I think that Croatia should definitely be a place that if you haven't already, but you're watching this video so you probably have, <laughs> look a little bit further into it because it has some great options. It's got so much to offer. Um, we are actually going to be in Split for two months yes. and we are staying and going to be able to give you a little bit of view into um, some of the different islands around here, into the actual city of Split. And in the end of our stay here, we're going to give you a wrap up of our two months cost of living. The nice thing about that is, is that we are not tourists necessarily coming. We right. don't live like tourists, at least when we come. So we're kind of able to give you a little more better look at what it might cost you if you came and you stayed yeah. for a longer period. You know, and I wouldn't want to miss any of that. What I would do is I would subscribe to this channel, first of all. And if you liked this video and it gave you the information you were looking for, please give us a thumbs up. Yes. Helps us out. Helps us out a lot. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay, you want me to start over? Yeah. Okay, what do you want me to say? I don't know. You can say all of that, okay. but you have to actually finish it. Okay.